it's cornering really well. Whoa. My legs are... <laughs> hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out. It's the Himaway Cruiser Step Through Electric Bicycle. And basically we're gonna review this today. This is a fat tire bike. I thought this bike was really cool because it's a step through and it's rechargeable. And of course it's a multi-speed kind of like mountain bike, cruiser bike type of deal with a rack on the back. So something for maybe older folks or people that really don't like that high bar of a mountain bike, they gotta step over. Step through means, you know, you have a really low step to get through it really easy to ride. Let's unbox this thing real quick, set it up, take it out on the road, in the gravel, in the dirt, see how this thing really performs. Let's get started. Okay, so this is basically how it came. Um, just to let you guys know, if you do get one of these, always use your mother's um, scissors, right? <laughs> To unbox things okay cool so top just opens up and you can see that's how this thing is packaged it looks like it was packaged very well bouncing around actually kind of dug into the cardboard here hopefully all this stuff is okay probably gonna be kind of piecemeal yeah so we're gonna have to put all this stuff together this might be kind of fun actually whole lot of zip ties just gonna start cutting away with these zip ties because it looks like they're pretty much holding everything, anchoring everything in there. Look at that bad boy. <laughs> that's a nice fat tire and that's some good grip there too, man. That's some pretty good knobbies for, you know, off-roading and taking some corners. You're not going to slip on the dirt and stuff. Okay, now it looks like the whole bike, the rest of the whole bike's just gonna kind of pull out. Get off of their box. Woo! There's something else right here. Toolkit and whatnot. Let's bust into this really fast. Accessories right there. Nice. Oh, we even get a hat. And some of the kind of same tools that come with some of the other electronic bikes. Pedals right here. We're gonna have to put those on. This is probably what a charger. Oh, that's the front headlight. Instruction manual here. And the charger is going to be down the down below. So we'll break into this when we start setting up the bike. Set of keys right there attached to the seat. Look at that thing. That's pretty cool. Bamboo Himaway rack it looks like it's possibly stainless steel not sure on the screws but that's where we're going to be putting that rear tail light look at that frame cool i got the white version they have like a black and maybe a few different colors and don't forget guys to check the description down below down there check the link and see what kind of colors they have and they actually have a lot of different bikes as well this is just one of them adjust these guys nice so you can adjust the rebound and it looks like compression there's the battery guys there's a little button you can see the charge right there so lock and unlock that thing just pops open that's awesome it wants to pop sideways I was trying to like pull it up and out then sideways all you do is you push it like this and look at that the whole battery is coming out whoop there's our connection ports to the bike's motor and stuff. There's a little lock on the top. Fairly heavy, you know, this feels like maybe, I wanna say about 15 pounds. So not a super light battery, but you know, more battery, the more power you have. And that's that button I was showing you just for the charge. Lithium ion battery, 48 volt, 17.5 AH. 840 watt hours getting this thing back in let's see let's see if we put it in the opposite way looks like you just want to seat the bottom here and then pull it towards you or away from you if you're on the other side look how easy that was 
and it automatically locks. Just busted out the manual here. Just wanted to like look at this really quick before I kind of delve into putting things on. Pretty decent manual. I mean, you can see here it goes through what everything is on the handlebars, overall of the bike here, gives you all of the specs here. It does have a maximum speed of 20 miles per hour. They say estimated 30 to 60 miles, 35 to 60, depending on, of course, your weight, terrain, all that stuff. Charge time is 6.9 hours. Maximum rider weight, 350 pounds of total capacity. So that's including like whatever you have strapped onto the rack as well as your own body weight. And this thing weighs altogether 72 pounds, but it looks like it's got some good stuff. Shimano shifter. The only thing they didn't really explain is any pictures of like, where and how to put the tail light, where and how to put the rack on. All they're really showing you is how to put the wheel on with that cross front axle, and then just mainly the pedals. Everything else just kind of has a description, but I'm gonna kind of go that, over that with you. So actually the first thing I wanna do guys is I wanna put on this rear rack. So here's that little tool they give you. And then as you can see, all of the screws are already kind of screwed in. If you did have some blue Loctite, I don't have any right now, but I'd recommend just like throwing a dab on the screw. Might as well, since you're taking these out anyway. There's only really one way to do it. And we're putting these screws right back in the same holes. Okay guys, so luckily I was actually able to find um, a few black washers that I had like just laying around. So that's always, always good to have just like spare parts and stuff laying around. But as you can see, these washers are actually perfect. So something they can include, um, include those washers because I'm just gonna give you a little example of how these go in for the tail light. So this is gonna be without the washer. You see how that just like slips right through, honestly, like a defect or flaw on their part if they gave a, if they gave maybe a little bit of a wider head. But, and then as you can see with the actual washer, it's able to have some backing there. So your tail light doesn't come loose and there we go. That's on there. Now I just gotta route this wire. So we're gonna have to use probably pretty much all the zip ties. Cool thing about this tool is you have actually have sockets as well. Well, that's pretty awesome. It's almost like you need another screwdriver or something to hold the other side. That one came loose, but anyway, we just need to slide it over just a little bit. There we go. So I just kind of evened it out. We've got an even space on both sides now, so I'll be able to put that zip tie in. I'll crank that down. It looks like it has a pretty good sheath so it's not going to damage the cable if you crank it pretty good. And there we go. Tail light is mounted. Okay, now it's just a matter of bringing this thing back down and mounting it back up on the frame. This is our handlebar clamp here. So I want to take this bracket apart, put the handlebars on and tighten this thing up. Well, kind of universal so it doesn't really matter which way that goes on. But it does matter which way these handlebars go on. They want to go with the Hemiway facing the rider. And let's see how challenging it is to get it on here with the wiring in front of it. You always want to kind of make this spacing even on the top and the bottom. So just remember to kind of keep an eye on that. At this point, I wouldn't crank them down really tight because you're going to want to move these handlebars around right when you're sitting up there you want to see what the best fit is for you so just get them you know a little bit snug knock them left or right push them up and down a little bit really nice solid handle for picking the whole bike up on that side all right so since i'm kind of waiting for my brother to do the front wheel I'm going to put on these foot pegs. See how it says right side pedal, tighten, and it has the arrow having uh, this direction right here. So you want to tighten it that way. So it'll only really screw on one way. So if you have the wrong pedal, don't worry about it. You just get the other one. There we go. Bust this tool out. I think this should be the one. Let's see. Just move the pedal around so you can get a good grip on it. And get a, give it a good crank. I mean, you don't want to break your tool or anything. Same thing, super easy. This one, see how it says left side pedal? And it has an arrow going this way. So this is reverse thread and they're kind of both going forward because that's kind of the way your 
feet are gonna be pedaling. All right, guys, well, my brother Casey showed up. Case, thanks for helping out, man. Really appreciate it. He's gonna help us put the tire on, the fender. Like I was saying, um, usually good to have two people, so really appreciate Case coming out to help out. So let's get this tire on. Plastic little um, abrasion pack. lock, I guess, for packing. packing, okay. And then there's one down here too, so if you lift it up, we'll take it off. Oh, that's just like a blank right there? Yeah. Okay. okay so. Oh, it just comes out that easy, huh? Quick release, right? Mm -hmm. Just boom, so you can change your tire quick. Goes through, put the spring on here. Yeah, wide part of the spring facing out towards the nut. We'll just go a little bit. Okay. We've got to line up the brake, right? Yep. Okay, go up a little bit higher. Yep. Okay. Nice. Now, down. There you go, there. Oh, that was real quick. I'll get a little bit tighter here and we'll make sure the brake is... There we go. Let it lift it up. There we go. Sweet. Boy, that was quick, man. Just kind of drops right down on it. So you just want to make sure it's tight so it doesn't come down out of it. You've never had any issues with bikes, like the wheel falling off, right? Not unless as as that's you... not tight enough, but yeah, just nice and snug on, on the closed side here. And then these little tabs are for the fender. Now we can put the kickstand down. Cool, looking like a bike now. This is the little bag of parts. Which bolts do you think it is? The long one? Yeah, because it goes through full. the whole light and everything. These are just the fender braces. Put these on. Oh shoot, looks like we're missing a nut. That sucks. We're missing a little piece of hardware, which is not gonna allow us to put the rear fender brace on. I mean the other side of the fender brace. Okay, we're driving without the fender for this one. So then we're plugging in the light. Just this push connector goes on one way. Just like that yeah so there's those led lights so it's like a four high intensity cluster that's kind of cool sit on it and then we'll see how the handlebars are uh, that seems about good right there you like it yeah Let's see what you think about that it's solid it yeah, feels good i think this is the preload dust like uh yep it tightens the spring to kind of for bigger people to yeah kinda... probably what i need so that's what it looks like guys without the fender on right because unfortunately missing a little bit of hardware and it does happen occasionally go ahead and take this bike out and do a full test in the pros and cons thanks for the help case appreciate it okay guys let's give this cruiser a try now remember what's unique about this one is it is the step through right so you know of course it's got a water bottle mount and then you can put your basket there's a basket mount here you can put it on front. Didn't have the proper hardware for the fender, so I'm going to have to probably run to the hardware store and get one of those um, nuts to be able to put my fender on. But So we don't have to throw our foot over. We can just step through just like this. Nice and easy. Makes it a lot more easy to get on the bike. Just holding it to power on. Just notice that there's um, some film protecting our shifter screen. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. We have a full charge. Just gonna have our assist on one. Remember it can go up to five, I think. Yeah, so we'll just do one for now. See how that feels. Anyway, let's get riding. All right guys, here we go. Get down to the road here. Wow, yeah, that power kicks in right away. Get down to the road here and then we'll reassess the drone here. Great readout, great big clear screen right there on the handlebars. Tells you really, with a quick refresh, how fast you're going. Just going down the gravel driveway here. Suspension feels real nice and plush, especially with its wheels. I didn't put any air in here in the tires, but they actually feel really um, plush. You know, they were a little bit, they could probably use a, maybe a few pounds of pressure. Wow. Yeah, that number one is actually already pretty good. I mean, I'm gonna turn it off for a minute. That's no assist, I just press the down button on there. How to shift up, just press this thumb thing right here. That's two, three, 
four, right? So I'm just full right now. Since I'm going downhill, I don't need any assist. Saving power. Let's go to five. Seems like once in a while it has a little bit of a shift kind of track issue, but just very um, slightly once in a while. So that's the shift up to make it, you know, you go faster and it's harder to pedal. And then to shift down, you push that lever. I just went all the way down to one. That was actually a mistake. So let's go back up to five. You got to be pedaling, right? Just like a regular mountain bike to shift the gears. So let's try that again. So you just push it very slightly and you can downshift. Push release once and you upshift. Now we're at seven, the maximum here. Going about 17 to 20 miles per hour, just coasting. It's feeling good. Feeling great. And of course, we have a drone issue again. Jeez Louise, Skydia, what's the problem? Let's kick on that assist. I need some assist help. Can't follow, not enough room. All right, guys, see those pine trees? Man. I really hope the Skydio 2 Plus is a lot better because this really gets ridiculous with um, the regular Skydio 2. You know, you're trying to have some distance and follow yourself. I wouldn't be surprised if it gets caught in those trees right there. Let's see. All right. Anyway, let me turn the assist back off. Let's see what we can do here. I'm just cruising down. I'm going to cruise down the road here. And then we're going to go back up. Okay, guys? Let's go ahead and upshift again. There we go. All right. Now the drone's in front. Let's see what we can do here. Upshift to seven because I'm going downhill. I have my assist all the way off because I'm saving power. already gone almost a mile the fat tires really do make this thing feel plush on the ride I like that going pretty fast now that speedometers 26 27 remember I'm going downhill right all right drones doing okay now Seems like this thing, you put the drone in like a distance from you and it needs to kind of settle into that distance. Otherwise it gets all screwed up. Anyway, bike's doing good. Still got a full charge, of course, because we're going downhill, we're going about 20 miles per hour. Feeling really good. I'd recommend leaving the tires not too full, you know, and you'll get a little bit better traction. I'm gonna turn right here immediately and I'm gonna turn on the assist there's a little bit of a hill here I'm going up to assist five Woo! and it's maximum power right now manageable totally manageable let's get the drone a little closer and let's get behind I'm just gonna turn around here I don't want to bother too many neighbors There we go. Yeah, so hills like that, seems like it's totally fine. The cool thing I noticed, guys, right when you hit the brake, if you're having an assist, it stops the assist even in mid-pedal. So, you know what I mean? Just go ahead and turn that off. All right, let's book it up here. Watch, when I put the, put, put the brake on, it cuts the power completely so you don't get that assist lag all right we're cruising now full power and the highest gear let's see how that drone keeps up with us we're going 20 up a hill of about i'd say you know a few percent incline five i can feel my legs working still that's good yep always want to feel your legs working a little bit you know I need, I need to work out, that's for sure. 
All right, let's see if we can get that drone in front. We are at full speed. I'm gonna drop it down for one gear because it's getting too hard to pedal. Even though we have that five full power assist right now, I am still feeling it. All right, feels good though. Feel a little bit of burn is always good. Go to speed seven. Oh, yeah, feeling great. And you can monitor the power. The power is like cutting in and out on the bars there as it kind of senses your feet uh, moving, you know, and your speed. Awesome. Doing good, doing good. Don't fail me now, drone. I had a little problem with that Skydio drone. Um, guys, just to tell you the truth, in my last review of a cool electric, um, kind of Harley Davidson looking scooter, the M1, and uh, the Skydio landed on the tree because it ran out of battery. So, yeah, they got to work on that, man. Because that was hard. I had to like, you know, get a tree trimmer expansion stick and poke it out of the tree and it barely, barely could reach it, man. So they need to make that thing not land in trees when it gets low on power. Anyway, back to the bike. The battery's still showing totally full. So I could be riding this thing for a long dang time, man. We're almost back home. I think I'm gonna go in a little bit of a trail off in the um in the dirt okay let's do that i'm getting to my driveway so i'm going to turn down to maybe assist one let's get this drone a little bit closer so it doesn't lose me okay man that assist one still has a pretty high deal of torque so that's cool All right, I have no idea if this drone's gonna follow me. I always lose it in this forest, you know, but I just wanted to give her a little whirl here. See if it could possibly follow. I honestly doubt it, but let's give it a try. It's probably gonna get lost immediately. Watch this. Yeah, these tires feel good. See, the drone has no idea where I am. That's pretty lame. Let's just see if it can lock onto the GPS. Pretty nice having trails right outside your back door, isn't it? Can't follow. No room. God dang it, Skydio. Figure it the heck out. Let's see if it'll return to me right now. Well, how the heck does it know where the beacon is and it can return to it? <laughs> Whatever. But it couldn't follow me when I have the beacon. That's the stupidest thing ever, isn't it? Okay, Bubba G. All right, let's try this again, guys. Ooh. I need some. Oh, yeah, I forgot. You need some assist to get started. Pull the throttle, right? This has like a motorcycle throttle. Pulling it helps you get started up a hill or something. And there you go. Yeah, great in the trails. I can hear the drone behind me. Hope it's following me. This would be good footage. This is kind of a little bit of a, you know, rockyish dirt trail terrain, right? I can feel that front suspension working great. Drone. 
I can hear it. I can hear the drone getting lost. <laughs> Dummy. Jeez. I do a set return option and I say return to the beacon and watch. Apparently it knows where I am because it goes up. Why the heck didn't it do that in the first place? See, why the heck doesn't it do that? So I'll turn around here before we gosh dang land in the <clears throat> freaking forest, right? All right, let's go. Oops, I just pressed zero. Let's go back to assist. Let's get this thing home. Quick, before it lands, because it has no more power. Go, go, go. I'm just on assist one right now, guys. Just really want to get home. I don't know, I might get the Skydio too. This is kind of lame not having enough power and the range just sucks. I mean, not the Skydio 2, but the Skydio 2 Plus, right? Is what I'm trying to say. Go, go, go. I do not want it to land. Okay, that's so stupid. I say return to the beacon and it knows where it is when it returns, but it can't freaking follow the beacon. It's the dumbest damn thing I've ever seen. Fix that crap, Skydio! Come on, you can make a drone that can avoid all the obstacles, but you can't make it follow people good. Even with your extra beacon. How lame is that? Enough about the dang drone. Let's get to this back. So far, so dang good, man. I'm gonna put this drone away and I'm gonna do some more riding in that trail when I don't, I'm not limited by this stupid drone. Always not being able to follow me. As far as weight of the bike, really easy to pick up and move around. So it's really not that heavy, especially the rear when you're just trying to move it around and place it. So let's get going. I wanna do a little bit more trail riding. Remember the right brake is the rear and the left is the front. Oh, watch out for the yucca plant. All right, this is gonna be fun. Thanks for coming along with me, guys. I haven't been able to do this with a, like a real full-fledged kind of, this kind of mountain bike on this trail yet. So really wanted to get the feel for it. And this one feels like it'll be a good one for just real all-terrain. Easy on all kind of age groups. Went over some rocks. Ooh. Yeah, those tires just soaked those rocks up, man. Nice. Oh, watch out for the cactus. Let's do some riding, guys. Feeling good. Yeah, man. Oh, a little bit of a skip on the shift. I didn't even try to shift, but it just like off the rail. If that happens, maybe I'll try to go to gear two and up my assist to number two right here. There we go. That feels a little bit better. Remember, anytime you wanna cut out your assist, just hit the brakes. Cause the assist will stay on for like a second after you're pedaling. You know what I mean? Oop! Rocks right there. A bit of rock ledge here. Oh, it's kinda of hard to see the trail with the sun getting low and glistening in the eyeballs. So this is the kind of stuff, man, this bike seems it's, like it's really enjoyable for. I don't really know these trails too well yet, but I can see once you do, just kind of ripping, ripping on them really good, you know? So I'm just in gear two and power setting two right now. Whoa, that is absorbing these little rocks. There's some larger boulders. Oh. Oh. Yeah, man, I'm liking fat tire bikes. This is the first fat tire bike I've really had. And this is just really excellent for these trails, man. These trails go for um, hundreds of miles. And my battery is still fully charged. 
Nice. Whew. Right through. Yeah. Just avoid the big rocks. And the big, ooh, I just nailed that bowler right there. Just gonna go for a little bit more and turn around, but you guys get the idea. Ooh, ledge. Front shock, I don't know, it's a little bit clunky. I mean, it works, but it just feels like it's a little notchy, like not very smooth, you know? Like it's binding a little bit. Uphill. Oh, oh, yeah. You can really hear that clank. Whoa. Trail split, so I don't want to get lost here. I'm gonna turn around. Okay guys, so total of 4.5 miles on our trip. There's the bike. Just the wheels are kind of dirty, no problem. Power is still completely full. And I've been using this battery a little. So far impressed. It's doing what it's meant to do. And it's a step through. You don't have to lift your leg all the way over. Of course, if you had a water bottle here, it might be a little harder to put your leg through. And then remember, this has like, you can adjust the rebound and everything. So you might want to play with these little guys a bit, you know, to uh, play with the front forks, how they can kind of absorb. I'm gonna click those down a little bit, make it a little bit softer for these rocks and stuff. Anyway, this is a great trail for this kind of bike. So, you know, rocky dirt, some stumps and roots, this bike has no problem absorbing the hits on the on the tires. Really recommend keeping your tires not too pumped up because you're gonna get a lot of shock absorption using how big, look how fat those tires, man. Those things are like, gosh, it's like four inches high, right? And four inches wide, somewhere around there. I forget the exact specs of the tire, but anyway. And they're Kendas and they got a lot of grip. Perfect for this kind of terrain. You know, they'll wear down more in the street if you're using them on the street a lot, but at least you have that versatility. Anyway, let's head it back home and do a final pros and cons wrap up. Whoa! Wouldn't recommend really jumping on this bike because there's no rear suspension. Whoa, those are some ruts and rocks. Gotta avoid those. No rear suspension, right? But the front suspension does work fairly well. Like I said, oh, there's a test on a root right there. Like I said, fairly clunky, not entirely smooth, but you, at least you can adjust. It feels like what might be happening. Oh, nice. Man, loving these wide tires. It feels like what might be happening, guys, is it like the rebound is too harsh set. So when the bike, um, when the shock rebounds it's hitting the stoppers of the shock i think that's what that sound is so you might want to make that a lot smoother even though i'm pushing you know above 200 pounds feels like the shock coat stump the shock could be more plush whoa nice whoa man i'm loving it i think after the review this is the bike my mom's getting she's my mother's 80 years old, guys, and this is the bike she wants. So, you might think about this for, you know, the elderly. Since it is a step through, and these tires absorb so much shock, I definitely recommend this for, it's kind of an all around, I mean, it's called a cruiser, but look at this, hauling through the trails. With the, with the um, bite on the tires, the traction, okay, it's cornering really well. Whoa, my legs are, whoa, <laughs> oh, all right, whoo, okay. Of course, the, the thing you don't want to hit, you hit, right? <laughs> of course, there had to have been a crash. Any damage? Let's assess this. Still full power. 
Awesome. Whew. Sorry about that, guys. This was my crash. Just coming around the corner, not really assessing the, um, the branch as much as I should have and kind of lost my balance and went right into it. That was a stupid one of those weird off, off cambers, but I really want to get this thing home and let's assess it. I don't want to assess it right here. I just want to get home off the trail. Okay. Seems to be working still. Working fine. Hopefully all my mic and everything is still recording. Ooh, that sun's getting dangerous to ride in. It's just flickering out of the corner of my eye, making it hard to see the trail. I think we're pretty close. So, little crash test, always in my videos, right? Most of the time, at least. And I've been pretty much sitting on my seat the whole time, guys. I haven't really been standing up just when there's like a big bump like this. A drop for a root or something, you know? That's about it. Almost there. Woo! Talk about fun, though. Woo hoo! All right. Two kind of too weird to pedal. I'm just going to use the throttle, like a motorcycle throttle, right here on the right. That gets me right through it. Woohoo! Oh man. Talk about a fun ride. All right, guys, so quick little crash assessment. Um, it's, you know, as to be expected. It's got a little dirty, you know, shocks are a little dirty there because I laid it down on this side. Got a little dirt here on the rack. The rack did not bend, kind of fell on that log and in the dirt. Lucky thing there was no cactus where I was falling, right? You know, just got a little dirty, but that's it. So nothing major there. Let's see how far we went. So we did 5.4 miles. So that would be my one con, is that it doesn't seem to reset the trip. Ride time, 40 minutes. So it does ride time. I don't know if that's total ride time. Odometer, 5.4. And here we go, here's our max speed. Max speed was 27.7 miles per hour. I'm just hitting this info button on the left. Our average speed was 7.4, but I wanted to show you, so powering off, just holding power, and then power back on, it does not reset your trip. So we have our odometers always gonna be ticking away, right? While you're moving, hitting the eye. Trip is still 5.4, so I'd like to see them um, make it easy to Kind of reset that sometimes it's like a combination of buttons maybe it's a combination of eye and power oh that just turns it off so that's one of the negatives in my book i love how it's all imperial i'm not sure if you can change it to kilometers or not I haven't researched that but can't reset the trip shock feels a little bit clunky in the trail you know like it's just maybe binding a little bit but that could just be you just need to kind of fine tune it adjust it a little better for your weight with those rebound and compression adjustments, which is great, that's a big pro. Tires are awesome. I mean, I don't see anybody that would really wanna go back to a, a regular size tire bike unless they're really pro and they really are in those small tracks because this is just really phenomenal because it's absorbing all those little bumps. This is how they came from the factory and they seem to be perfectly filled. Battery power, another thing. Didn't even bust a sweat, didn't even break into the battery. I didn't need to see it go down even one notch in that entire 5.4 miles of use yet. So that means it's going to go a long way. And what's cool about these battery powered bikes is you can turn off the assist if you want, save a bunch of power. Not sure if this one does regen. I didn't see that anywhere in the manual. So it'd be a bonus if it does some kind of regen when you're going downhill coasting. I wanted to put on the provided front fender but I was missing one of the nuts. Not a major con there, but it is nice to have all the hardware to, if you're required to put the bike together. So it is a con. Assist is perfect. Uh, one, zero through five works great. Gives you more throughout the power curve. But anyway, guys, as for the lights, they seem to work fine. I didn't really use it at night, but in the garage, they're super bright. You can adjust that how you want. Um, the brake lights work fine. 
brake light comes on when you turn the lights on and then it always comes on as long as the bike's on when you press the brakes and that's what a brake light should do. And that little rack on the back is definitely going to be useful. And then there was that little negative on the kind of the chain might need some adjustments on. It seemed like first gear it had the problem like the lowest easiest pedaling gear. It kind of had that like little notching like it wanted to switch over but it wasn't quite there so I'll just switch up to two once you get going. Um, or just do some adjustments. Besides that, guys, a fantastic bike. I mean, I think this is one of the most affordable and kind of, you know, it's called a cruiser bike. So it's it's really kind of built for not the extreme off-road and not the really street people. It's kind of in between. You can see you can take it off-road. does very well off-road. Take it on the street and it's just relaxing. I'm just amazed that there was no dent in the battery. That's just awesome. So you're going to have a long battery life with this thing. And I had lots of fun on it. Anyway, guys, don't forget to check out the Himaway down below. Link in the description down below. So make sure to hit that link. Like the video if you if you really enjoyed um, what I do here. And I hope you got some information that was valuable in possibly um, making a purchase or not with this bike. I'll see you in lots of more of these reviews, drone reviews, all kinds of reviews, RC vehicles, bikes, skateboards. So really loving these kinds of vehicles that are coming out now and I'll be doing lots more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.